So, we were discussing here that uh, the performance based design specialist PBD specialist will work with the conventional structural engineer this is code based design code based designer and then uh, he will also work with the site specific consultant and then finally, we should have a peer reviewer another expert which will check your your PBD process. So, PBD specialist is working with the structural engineer code based designer at the same time the site specific consultant for example, if you want some geotechnical hazard report or site specific hazard assessment PSHA or wind tunnel testing that site specific consultant will provide and then he will also consult with the PBD peer reviewer. Peer reviewer finally, will give his findings to the code based designer. So, ultimately the revision will be conducted by the same code based designer based on the guidance given by the PBD expert and the PBD peer reviewer right. So, these are some of the stakeholders which are involved in this whole process. So, PBD specialist is working with these three professionals right. Uh, but obviously, client is working with all of the stakeholders, he is the main uh, stakeholder in the whole process. So, the overall uh, process if I can broadly classify into different components it will be first obviously, you have to get a starting design, you can use the code based design for that purpose right. So, you perform the conventional analysis based on elastic computer model and code based design loading and you produce one design. Now, this design will serve as a starting design for PBD right. Then you convert using that design you convert that model into a non-linear computer model and then you perform non-linear analysis and then extract the results and then interpret them in terms of building performance and if they are not acceptable then again you change the initial design which will result in a change in your non-linear model and then the iteration will continue. If I break that uh, a bit more the overall process will start with the architectural drawings preliminary design detailing. Generally, we perform linear elastic modeling and perform the conventional code based seismic analysis equivalent lateral force procedure or response spectrum analysis procedure. And uh, we then uh, think that after running that analysis we can perform that fin final detailing and final steel cross section sizes everything. So, the conventional code based design process is up till this this level up till this point, but in PBD obviously, you go beyond that you convert uh, the final design into the capacities which are required as an input in a non-linear computer model. For example, you finalized a particular columns steel let us say this is a particular cross section of a particular column you finalize it at this stage. Now, conventional design will simply give this column to draftsman and it will go for implementation, but what you can do further is in PBD that using that final design which is the size of that column and amount of steel you can convert this design into the capacity right, because the for example, for columns the the action versus deformation curve which should be given in as an input in the nonlinear model is the moment versus column rotation m theta. See uh, for example, let us take the example of a beam this is a my beam if the moment is applied m on either of its uh, ends it will bend and that bending is actually the moment deformation the deformation corresponding to moment we can quantify that deformation using this number theta. Theta is defined as at any point if I just take the tangent of the deformed shape the angle with which it makes with horizontal is theta. So, the end rotation the theta value at this end and a theta value at the other end this end rotation is generally declared as the deformation measure for moment right just like stress is the action and strain is the deformation shear force shear deformation torque twist similarly moment and rotation right bending deformation is quantified using this theta number rotation so the actual relationship between moment and rotation of a particular beam or a particular column 
will depend on its amount of steel, will depend on its uh, cross sectional size, will depend on F C prime, F Y everything. So, from the final design you construct the actual curve m versus theta which your this column is going to experience. Now, you know that what is the moment in which uh, at which this column will yield, what is the moment at which this column will start cracking and what is the moment at which this column will be completely damaged right and the corresponding theta values also you know now right. So, you give this curve as an input in the nonlinear model right and not only this curve you also define three markers on that curve or more than three right. So, moment versus rotation curve which is a product of the final design which is the capacity provided by the final design you give this as an input in the nonlinear model and on that mod, uh, curve you define that this is my I O, this is my L S, this is my C P or this is my cracking, yielding and ultimate right. So, the program now have two things from you the complete capacity curve for your column or beam and the complete uh, and, and the three acceptance criteria on that curve also. Similarly, for uh, beams you have the same m theta for concrete you will have a stress strain curve and the I O L S and C P will be in the form of strains. Uh, for steel you will have a stress strain curve of steel right. Then you perform first the S L E level analysis then M C level analysis. Uh, you will first run the service level evaluation then uh, M C E level evaluation. Then finally, for both of the levels performance assessment is carried out. So, performance assessment is what in now you, now you understand it is simply checking the acceptance criteria. It is simply checking after the analysis whether the capacities which you have provided prior to the analysis have exceeded the or not right the demand have exceeded the capacity or not for each element right. So, for the same column after the analysis you will check whether the theta produced by the applied loading have exceeded I O or L S or C P or not depending upon the level of earthquake right. So, if the the performance is acceptable you finish the process otherwise you change the design and re repeat the same performance based loop analysis loop right. So, this is the overall breakup of uh, this whole process. Some of the prerequisites first of all obviously, uh, the basis of design is the most important thing in this whole process. You have to first agree on the performance objective this is the most critical thing. In conventional uh, design you may not require this additional performance objective requirement because uh, it is understood that you will follow a building code and whatever is the performance objective set by that building code is by default the performance objective. But here in PBD the performance objective have to explicitly stated in the basis of design document. So, when you perform the when you provide the loading criteria codes used for the initial uh, design and then references and standards used for PBD description of the building and structural design material properties modeling procedure most importantly this last thing this is an additional thing in PBD. So, the basis of design or design criteria document should be very clear about what is the intention of this PBD process right. Geotechnical investigation you may require for obviously, when you are performing nonlinear analysis more sophisticated analysis you may require additional inputs for example, geotechnical investigation site specific PSHA sometimes you may not rely on the building code numbers. So, you want the PSHA process to be conducted for your specific site. So, that specific numbers for your site will be there. Wind tunnel testing this is a process which will give you the real wind loading uh, which your building is going to experience during its design life. So, sometimes you may not rely on the wind loading prescribed by building codes you actually test a, a model under wind loading and then using different uh, sensors you calculate the actual wind loading then apply that in your computer model. So, the special purpose guidelines for PBD are some of them are here 
they are most of them are freely available please check them google them and you will find most of them atc guidelines fema guidelines federal emergency management agency then uh, nehrp national earthquake hazard reduction program uh, please google that and several of the pbd guidelines are there pacific earthquake engineering research peer guideline for tall buildings uh, tall buildings initiative is from peer actually but peer also have several other guidelines it is an organization based in university of california berkeley then council of uh, tall buildings and urban habitat right c t b u h guidelines they also are very useful many of them are already available in your course folder the link i have already shared but i'll explain that in next few slides also these are those guidelines and they are the latest guidelines they recommend non linear dynamic analysis now for the purpose of mc level evaluation previously we used to perform static analysis or push over analysis so they are most most of them are available freely so finally we are here course contents uh, the first topic will start with the introduction of seismic hazard so maybe i'll have one or two lectures about psha okay. just to give you an idea about what we actually perform in this whole process uh, these are some of the concepts uh, which you must know before we proceed further what is response spectrum uh, and then how it is used in different building codes so the topic one is about seismic hazard the nature of earthquake itself then the next topic i included about the code based seismic analysis it is a prerequisite for pbd so i will have one or two sessions about the international building code approach for seismic analysis right uh, and i have some uh, already available playlists uh, which cover the conventional seismic analysis procedures so in this course i'll not go into their detail uh, if you want more information you can check these playlists right so the blue color topics will be covered explicitly in this course then topic 3 will be about uh, the new building code uh, 2021 actually so some of the implications or challenges which our industry is going to face now with this big shift ubc 99 to ibc 2021 capacity design and ductility design of structures it is mostly focus on how we can provide capacity to different elements so that they can perform better in 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 case of extreme seismic events finally uh, we will be introducing the pbd process itself most of the discussion is done already but i'll formally introduce it step by step manner Uh, and i'll follow actually this tall buildings initiative guidelines tbi guidelines for its introduction so from this topic 5 onwards i'll follow exactly the format of this pbd guidelines they are freely available and also included in your course folder so we will be discussing about ground motion characteristics modeling and analysis then service level evaluation and mc level evaluation Uh, once we are introduced with the overall methodology now we just have to learn non linear modeling so i'll directly go to the software itself and i will have several hands on training sessions on perform 3d how you can start a computer model how you can convert in, into non linear model what are the inputs required for constructing a non linear computer model from where you can get those inputs so several sessions demonstration actually they are not exactly hands on unless you bring your own computers also and you go step by step uh, and then once the non linear model is ready we can run dynamic analysis uh, on example buildings i obviously i'll give you one one assignment for that that you have to do it for your own building uh, which you can uh, select from any of the existing buildings Uh, and then finally once you get the results how we can interpret element by element the results how we can interpret the results of uh, uh, the non linear dynamic analysis mc level and what uh, will be the design decision makings associated with those results finally if time allows we also will have one session about cost optimization and then uh, uh, one session maybe the last one will be about 
the structure of a typical PBD report, how after the whole process, how you should report the results, right? There will be few optional topics also. Uh, I am not sure we will have time for them, but if time allow, we can have one or two session. So, let me skip all that detail. There are several uh, reference books, uh, which I have listed here. You can consult them. Uh, different international standards and guidelines. Many of them are already available in your course folder. Some are uh, focusing on nonlinear modeling, some are focusing on the PVD methodology itself, some are focusing on getting the inputs for nonlinear analysis, right? Some research journals which you can consult for some of the latest ideas or research topics, some internet resources for learning. Uh, these are uh, the list of web pages which can be used to uh, download useful learning material ground motion databases which are uh, available for uh, the downloading the public data for uh, ground motion histories, magazines or articles, video playlist. So, everything is available. Finally, I will follow the same grading scheme which I have followed in the last course. Uh, we will have term project additionally this time that will be the performance based analysis of one example building. 